Now let's look at writing equations for exponential functions. So the first key is, is that all exponential functions, or at least the basic exponential functions, are all in the form of y is equal to a b to the x, where a is the initial value. And b is a constant. And with those two, then they, this, these are actually pretty easy problems. So first, let's look at a problem with a table. So let's write the equation of the following exponential function given by this table. Now, the key to this problem is, is that we have a number where x is 0. We have a value where x is 0. So this is actually when x is 0 gives us the initial value. So we have the initial value is equal to 5, so a is equal to 5. Now actually, even if you're not given that, it's a fairly easy problem, but not one that we're concerned with now, or we won't be concerned with in pre-calculus. Um, so if the initial value is a, then let's write the formula. We have y is equal to a, b to the x, and we already know that y is equal to 5, times b to the x. So what we need to do, if you let's look at that problem right there. In this problem right here, we're almost done. The only thing we don't know is b. So what we do is we take this problem and we take any other point, it doesn't matter which one, we temporarily plug in x and y to find b. This is very much like a problem we did with the parabolas. Let's plug in this one, 3 and 135. So then you temporarily plug in 135 for y times 5, let's b raised to the power of 3. Now let's solve for b. Let's divide both sides by 5, both sides by 5, and we have b cubed is equal to, let's see if I can do 135 divided by 5 in my head. I can't, so I go 135 divided by 5 is equal to 27. So now I need the opposite of a cube. The opposite of a cube is a cube root, so I'm going to do b is equal to the cube root of 27, which is simply 3. Then I plug 3 back in to b, and I end up with my final answer. My final answer is y is equal to 5 times 3 raised to the x. So let's think about what we did here. First, the very first step is by knowing what 0 is, the value of y when x is 0, that gives us the initial value. Because that's what we mean by initial value. When x is 0, y is 5. So a is 5. Then what we do is we plug in a to this problem. And we get y is equal to 5 times b to the x. The only thing we need to know is b. So we choose any other point. We temporarily plug it in and solve for b. Then when we plug it back, b back into this problem, we're done. Let's do another problem, and now let's do it from a graph. Write the equation of the following exponential function. The key again here is, is that, if you notice right here, this is the initial value of the function. If that's the initial value of the function, then we know it's y is equal to a, b to the x, plug in the initial value, the initial value is the value of y when x is 0, so that's 10, so that's y is equal to 10 times b to the x. And there we're almost done, right? If we look at this problem right here, we have everything we need except for b, so what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily plug in a value for x and y, and we can use any point along this graph. In this case, we have 1 identified, so we plug that in, so we go 160 is equal to 10 times b to the 4. I'm going to solve that for b. So I divide by 10 and I get b4 is equal to 16. So I have b is equal to the fourth root of 16. And in general it would be plus or minus. Now why isn't it plus or minus? Well, if we go back to the original definition of exponential function, we only look at cases when b is positive. 
right? And that's the reason. And that's the general rule. When you take the square root or any other even root, it's always plus or minus unless there's some specific reason for there not it not to be plus or minus. Now the fourth root is 16. I'm gonna do my calculator real quick. I think it's two. Two times two, four times two is eight times two is 16. So B is two. So if B is two, then I simply plug that in, right? Here I had everything I needed except for um, B. Now I know B, so Y is equal to 10 times 2 to the X, and that's my final answer. And that's how you write equations of exponential functions.